I played that that very fine piece that Chris Core uh, recorded the very day he heard that I had received my notice when it appeared in the Washington Post. And then just today, by accident, I was walking by the radio. You know, the radio's on in the room I walked by, and I heard Bob Neiser uh, doing a piece about me. And I want to, again, in this particular case, thank him probably for being so kind as to do that. And for those of you who may have missed it, and so that I may hear it all the way through, I'd like to do what he did earlier tonight. Well, uh, just a few words now about a fine gentleman by the name of Felix Grant, who will be packing up all his albums and departing the station after his show tonight. You know, Felix has been an institution in this town and on WMAL for about 30 years, and I've known him for about 22 of those years. And there's not a nicer human being in this business, and I doubt if there's anyone in this country more knowledgeable about the field of jazz or more dedicated to it. Because of Felix, few, if any, of the jazz greats missed stopping by WMAL during the late night hours to chat. And because of Felix, the Washington area was treated to a class act during those three decades. In a business that tends all too often to seek the lowest common denominator, Felix stood above the battle. And it was not only to his credit, but to this station that he was able to give us all those cool nights of music for so long. An old salt once said, a man who ain't run aground ain't sailed very much, and well, it's just a matter of time. Now, the album sound has traveled a long distance. Perhaps that explains it all. I don't know. But even if the nature of this business makes such departures inevitable, it doesn't make it any easier to accept. Felix, we're going to miss you, with you. That was Bob Neiser. You can imagine my particular feeling after being on this program for 30 years and, and hearing that come out on the radio. Uh, someone said to me the other night, another friend who used to work there, she called and said, you sound a little tense. I said, baby, tune in Friday. You want to hear tense? And uh, anyway, it's kind of fun tonight in, in many respects. There are... A lot of people I would like to have included. I skipped over many that I wanted to play and couldn't, but I just... Let me play a bit of this piece, because I have one final piece of music that I just have to play. So in the meantime, let me get a little bit of Woody Herman. friendships and uh, 
Woody has been a guest on this program, and uh, anytime Woody comes around, it's great fun to hang out, and I enjoy him very much. What would a final record be after 30 years? Someone for whom I have intense admiration, and it has remained that way from the very first time I ever heard her on a broadcast when I was a youngster in New York. And I can say no more that for the final piece of music that I will be able to play here on WMAL, none other than Billy Holiday. such an incredible amount in all the years I've, I've been on the air. As a matter of fact, even as a youngster in New York, when I first heard her, I remember the very first time I ever heard Billie Holiday. She was singing with the Artie Shaw Band, and she just absolutely knocked me out. First place I ever saw her was in this city, the place that was known as the Club Valley. It was the corner of 14th 
and T. And as a matter of fact, even with Jackson Logan having been by here a little bit earlier, Jackson and I were up there at the big Billy Holiday. So as a final piece, uh, please don't talk about me when I'm gone. Uh, also, a couple of good friends, Jim Messenger, Ron Hess, stopped by, and a whole batch of other people. And uh, 30 years goes by in a hurry. Maybe if you're 25, you don't think so. But uh, believe me, it does. I can't help but think of the song that Mabel Mercer sang. She was a super woman. She sang, If you thought you had fun when you were 21, wait till you were 65. And that thought crossed my mind as well. I've had any number of people ask about uh, the song Tenderly. And uh, we had two versions tonight. We had one played by Art Tatum, another one that was played uh, and sung by Rosemary Clooney. It has, uh, by the sheer accent of the length of this program, the, the most played piece of music in the history of WMAL radio. And, and that will probably stand for a long time before any other piece will have been played as much. I've had any number of inquiries for people asking me to play the song all the way through. So I'll just say uh, goodbye and then play Kendall. Libya's U.N. diplomats, their staffs, and families have been ordered to stay in New York City until further notice. 
The restrictions are the toughest yet imposed on a foreign mission at the U.N. The State Department is said to have ordered them for security reasons, but won't explain why. U.S.-Libyan relations have been strained in recent years. The Reagan administration has charged Libya's Muammar Gaddafi with supporting international terrorism, especially in Britain. The latest on that from ABC's John Cooley. Well, Gaddafi celebrated the 15th anniversary of his revolution here by releasing two Britons detained in Libya since the siege of the Libyan embassy in London in April. At least four more Britons are still held without trial. The British government has refused to swap them for Libyans convicted of terrorist acts in Britain. Six opposition Labour Party parliamentarians who had flown here to try to get the detainees released returned to London without the two who were let go because they didn't realize they were being released. Their departure annoyed the Libyans who had wanted the parliamentarians to stay through tomorrow's celebration of Revolution Day and to be part of Gaddafi's ceremony. John Cooley, ABC News, Tripoli. And I'll have more after this. There's a very unconventional school right here in your own community. It doesn't have a campus, a football team, or a single ivy-covered building. The tuition is nominal, yet every course it offers was developed by a top professional. Who attends this school? Well, some of the students teach college. Some haven't been in a classroom in 20 years, and some are still too young for primary school. Yet last year, millions of students graduated, having learned some of life's most important lessons. Things like CPR, first aid, water safety, and blood pressure control. Things that might save your life someday, or somebody else's life. Who runs this school? An organization that teaches more people each year than all the colleges in the country combined. The American Red Cross. To take a class, just call the Red Cross. A school for life. The American Red Cross. We'll help. Will you? Trouble with the flight control system caused Wednesday's crash of a prototype B-1 bomber in California's Mojave Desert. ABC News has learned the bomber's swing wings jammed at a low altitude. The crash killed one crewman and seriously injured two others. The mystery over what causes sudden infant death, death syndrome, the killer of thousands of babies each year, may be solved. Penn State pathologist Dr. Richard Noya tells us what his research on crib death has revealed. We've developed considerable new evidence that uh, it originates in pregnancy. Uh, not during labor and delivery, but during pregnancy itself. A whole series of factors that would make the unborn infant uh, hypoxic, that is low oxygen, uh, we think are damaging the brain of the unborn infants. Noya says his three years of research at Penn State's Hershey Medical Center also indicates that mothers who smoke or who are anemic are more likely to have babies who die of sudden infant death syndrome. Navy Secretary John Lehman has told a group of Jewish war veterans in Washington that the U.S. will use appropriate military force wherever it's needed to achieve the goals of peace with freedom. Lehman says he's convinced Americans once again have the will to face evil and to stand, in his words, toe-to-toe -to -toe with a powerful adversary. Lehman confirmed that Israel would lease 12 of its Kafir jet fighters to the U.S. Navy to be used to simulate Soviet aircraft in air war exercises. The U.S. is considering supplying El Salvador with helicopter gunships of the type used in Vietnam. The Washington Post says the choppers carry guns that fire up to 18,000 rounds a minute and would be used in El Salvador to pin down leftist guerrilla units fighting the U.S.-backed government. Lottery fever is sweeping Illinois, and folks are actually flying there from as far away as California to play six-number combinations for tomorrow night's drawing. Illinois Lottery Chief Michael Jones tells us why. The estimated grand prize to a single winner for this weekend's lotto grand prize has been raised from $36 million to $40 million to a single winner. That would mean that if there was only one winner, you would receive the unheard of sum of $2 million a year for the next 20 years. This is ABC News. If something is red, can it be redder than something else? That question, one of thousands being fielded by English professors in New York City on what is billed as a grammar hotline that offers advice on word use and spelling. When the phone rings at 212 Rewrite, the volunteers have more than 70 manuals and grammar books at their fingertips answering questions from secretaries, reporters, lawyers, even people playing games. Hotline founder Joan Baum says the latest question involves how to address vice presidential candidate Geraldine Ferraro. MS for Ms. is correct. For the ABC Information Network, I'm Bob Windsor.
Well, good morning and welcome to music again right after the news here on WMAL. Five minutes after one o'clock and indeed a lovely, lovely evening outside. Inside it's it's raining here at WMAL and well, I'll give you the forecast and everything in just a little while. Gee, the toughest assignment of my career so far is to follow Felix on the last night of his just under 30 years performance. And just let me tell you this. You know, I was born here in Washington, but because Dad was in the Air Force, we traveled around a lot. First thing when we returned to Washington in 1965 was to reset the radio dial here to AM 63. And every evening there was Felix. And I first appreciated Felix's show when I was barely 15 years old. At that time, I wanted to be a singer. Time passed, and my dream was fulfilled. And ever present, on my way to and from the gig, was Felix Grant. And I learned more from listening to his show about music than I have from any other source. I hope Felix realizes the influence he has on hopeful musicians to be, because he taught and played the best music in the world. And I have Felix to thank for any knowledge I might have about music, both old and new. What Felix Grant has done for musicians in this town and on this earth cannot be verbalized. And I'm just one small voice speaking for thousands. When I say, Felix, we will miss you. So long, old shoe. This is for you. I After 1 o'clock, WMAL time. Ladies and gentlemen, Mattress Discounters presents the many uses of the mattress. Lay on it. Lay on it. Save on it. Pray on it. Think on it. Drink on it. Mattress Discounters. Mattress Discounters. 
Freedom, put on it. Sleep on it. Can't cheap on it. Jump on it. Have fun on it. Mattress discounters. Mattress discounters. Have a good night. Sleep on us. Have a good night. Sleep on us. Now through Labor Day, Mattress Discounters is offering Sealy mattresses for as little as $49. Plus, with each set purchased, your choice of a free bed frame, you heard me, free linen set, or a free brass tone headboard. Look for Mattress Discounters ad in this weekend's post. Mattress Discounters, the place to save this holiday weekend. And Alexandria took a show in Nancy's linen shop. An image of a lifestyle that's Virginia. You'll find it at the Nancy Fleming shop in Alexandria, Virginia. Taste, simplicity, and tradition, all offered at a fair value. The Nancy Fleming Shop is located on South Washington Street in Old Town, and we cordially invite you to inspect our in-depth collection of long dresses suitable for the most discriminating taste. Please accept our invitation to come in and browse. We know you'll just love the Nancy Fleming Shop. Ample free parking available. An Alexandria tradition, the Nancy Fleming Shop. She that girl talking at a nice voice, and she 12 after 1 o'clock WMAL time. It's hard to select music this morning on an occasion when callers are sad, and it truly is the end of an era. At WMAL, we've been very, very proud of Felix. 12 and a half after 1, I was in the library and looking on the back of a George Benson album that says specifically, we have little labels for certain things that we play, and right on the back of the album here it says, Felix Only. I thought this might be a good one to play. George Benson. And no one goes 
George Benson with Everything Must Change. 20 minutes after 1 o'clock, WMAL time. Fair and cool tonight. The AM63 weather station calls for lows maybe down to 55 degrees outside the Beltway. Saturday, look for mostly sunny highs, 81 to 85 degrees. And uh, that's going to be a dynamite day Saturday. Clear and cool again Saturday night, about 55 degrees in the suburbs. And the outlook for Sunday and Monday, hmm, slight chance of an afternoon thunderstorm and increasingly warmer as we go into our week. WMAL's Larry Krebs will join me right after David Starling. They're standing in line this morning to get on the show. Toyota presents A Word on the Presidency. Toyota honors the most extraordinary office in the world with footnotes to presidential history. Both parents of only two presidents lived to see their sons assume the nation's highest office. More on that after this for Toyota. I'm Police Officer Murphy. Are you the director? Ah, oh, officer, thank goodness you're here. Now, look, we're using the showroom to do a Toyota van radio commercial. Could you just keep the crowd back behind the ropes, please? An easy job, yes, sir. Okay, roll tape. Toyota van radio, take one. Introducing the new Toyota van from 1984. It's a wonder wagon. You'll wonder why no one ever thought of it before. This unique van handles like a wonder. Seats seven or sleeps four and carries 1,500 pounds, including occupants, equipment, and cargo. Hold it! What? Radio can't do justice to that lovely thing. It's it's so difficult looking. Officer. Well, you can get two sons. And what's this? An ice Off- maker. Officer, if you don't And mind. if I'm correct, he'll fit into the garage. Oh, Sonny, Sonny. you're making a mistake with radio. <laughs> right, officer. Now, could you just blow your whistle again and gang, we'll take that as a cue, okay? Yeah, the boy. Oh, Wonder Wagon. When her son James was born, a neighbor told Jane Knox Polk that he would one day be president, wrote Rita Halle Kleeman in Good Housekeeping magazine some years ago. The neighbor was right, and Mrs. Polk lived to see her son become president of the United States. The mothers of ten presidents were living when their sons became president. In addition to Jane Polk, There were Mary Washington, Susanna Adams, Nellie Madison, Hannah Grant, Eliza Garfield, Nancy McKinley, Sarah Roosevelt, Martha Truman, Rose Kennedy, and Lillian Carter. Mrs. Garfield was the first to see her son inaugurated. Lincoln, Harding, and Ford had stepmothers living when they moved into the presidency. Fathers who lived to see their sons become the chief executive were ex-president John Adams, Nathaniel Fillmore, George Harding, John Coolidge, who enjoyed the unique privilege of administering the oath of office to his son, and Joseph Kennedy. Both parents of only two presidents, Grant and Kennedy, lived to see their sons assume the highest office in the land. Toyota has presented a word on the presidency, reminding you to get the feeling. Register and vote for the candidate of your choice. I'm David Starr. Thank you, David. 24 after 1 o'clock WMAL time. Karen Henderson with you, joined now by our all-night newsman, Larry Krebs. Good, good morning. morning, Karen. How are you? Fine. How about Looking you? Looking good. Go? Thank you. You're on a diet, huh? Yes. You going to tell everybody how much weight I've lost now so far? Well, let's put it this way. Uh-huh. Are you, you're in with all the other are WMAL you? employees in that contest of lose weight, you That's know, right. and somebody gets a, a trip in? to the Pepsi-Cola machine, in Coke machine, pool. soft drink machine? Yes, I am. And I'm winning so far. I don't know that for a fact, but that's positive. I think so. You look good. See, thank you. Thank you. Look you. Good. Now, can, I, can I quit tucking in now? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, business-wise out here, we've had uh, some fire calls, the uh, usual routine of what uh, annoyance calls where people forget. Take the food off the stove, doze off, get on the phone, and start talking, or go back out to the car, they forgot something, things of that type. So we've had some of those. Uh, dandy dumpster type thing, also mattress fire. No injuries to any of them that we know of, uh, fortunately. Accident wise, uh, it's been mainly fender benders at this point. Uh, people in a hurry to go someplace, uh, those that are in town at least. Uh, the out of town folks, even to this minute as we talk, a little bit of traffic out there, and you can see some folks that have gotten off, say, at 11 o'clock, 11 30, that are still uh, headed down 270 or uh, down 50. Going up into the mountain area, the shore, whatever, things of that type, and uh, beyond that point, uh, traffic-wise is there. Uh, I'd like to emphasize one thing uh, from Maryland State Police and Virginia State Police, as well as the counties surrounding. They have definitely emphasized that they have extra patrols on the road for drunk drivers. 
Prince George's County is running checks at a couple different locations, sobriety checks. So don't be surprised if suddenly you see a row of flares, and this can be done in the daytime as well as night. Virginia State emphasizes that their cars are not all marked police cars. As a lot of folks know through the years, uh, it might be red, it might be blue, it might be a convertible, it might be a four-door, two-door, could be a sports model. And uh, there are state police officers in those vehicles, and uh, you're susceptible for a ticket for speed, and they intend to enforce the speed, not just the drunk driving, but the speed loss. Maryland State is putting quite a bit of hem- heavy emphasis where they've pulled all officers that would normally do inside duty, uh, desk jobs, and as that reports, these officers have had their days shifted. They will be working the full holiday on the roads, not in the buildings. Also, helicopter, correction, not plane, I should say, not helicopter, but uh, they'll be, Maryland will be using planes for enforcement at all hours. They know you folks see the white marks on the roads where they go across uh, from left to right on the roadway as you're driving, not talking about the center stripes and so on. Uh, These are speed checks. They can tell what you're doing along with other locations that are unmarked on the roadway. The road mark is merely to wake you up that, hey, you can be watched from the air. So we can't emphasize enough. Uh, For the holiday, we don't want any fatalities. We just as soon see no injuries. That's right. I have two comments to make here. Go ahead. One is I have an unconfirmed report that within this last week, I believe it's Fairfax County, officers went into an establishment and arrested some 10 to 12 people for being drunk in public, took them out of the actual establishment where there was drinking on the premises, and arrested them to this, stop the stop them from getting in their cars. Anything is possible. Them. It sounds a little bit leery to me, though, going into a business establishment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it that's does. That's what uh, bothers me. That's why I said it's unconfirmed. Right. The other thing I wanted to tell you is uh, we have phone numbers this morning that are in effect between 7 p.m. Friday evening, which was last evening, and 3 a.m. Tuesday morning for safe rides home for people this weekend. And if you're in Northern Virginia, the phone number to call is 522-0107. If you're in Montgomery County, Prince George's County, or the district, phone 984-1900 to get you safely home. Right. I'd like to emphasize one thing. That doesn't mean that if you're at a private party, that they're going to come to that home and pick you up. That's right. Please. This is for public establishments, public people that have been out, uh, and especially where we did the, the different outfits did the same thing at the end of the school term last year for the proms, if you remember, uh, where the folks had been out partying and so on at uh, hotels and so on. The rides were there, but anyone that is at a private home, not for a free ride, stay where you are. Right. Okay. So we sorry to take so much time, but it's very important well, on the holiday our... weekend, the three-day uh, weekend, amazing. and uh, very important. Police have asked us, please uh, talk about it as much as we can, push it as much as we can, and uh, save a life. It would be a wonderful thing if you wouldn't have to work so hard on the overnight reporting accidents and injuries. Well, we've had some more drastic ones, unfortunate, but uh, let's say that this holiday we're going to come through clean. All right. WMAL's all-night newsman Larry Krebs at 